what you just saw, which is the, the clapping, is a technique I learned when I was in the entertainment industry, which is called a clapperboard technique. That's usually used for post-processing and editing. So when we're doing the editing, it helps us to synchronize the footage that's coming from the video and also the audio that's coming from a different source. And because it makes a very loud clapping sound, so it helps us to synchronize the two tracks together by reading the frequency there. So why am I sharing this with you in a UX research video? Just like you, I came from a background that was completely not related to UX research, and that's where I got all of these weird knowledge. But in today's video, I wanted to give you a very comprehensive guide that help people like you and me who have zero background and experience in UX research to break into the field. So stick around and let's jump right in. to see you here my name is Aona and welcome to my channel today's video is going to be my most comprehensive video on my channel thus far I will give you this very comprehensive step-by-step -step guide on how to start a US research career with absolutely zero zero background What I want you to take away from this video is a actual action plan on what you should do and what you should plan to do in the next three to 12 months to get yourself into the field. Today's video is going to be very helpful for you if you are in one of these situations. You have zero background, zero experience in UX research and just want to become one eventually, but you're not sure where to start. Or you have zero actual training in UX research, but you are already in an adjacent research field. Or if you have some training in UX research already, but you're struggling to find related UX research experience to build up your research portfolio, then today's video is for you. In this video, I will cover the following topics. What does it take to be a UXR? What qualities and knowledge should a UXR have? If I have zero knowledge, how do I start learning it? And which resources should I use? How to build up a UX research portfolio from scratch, especially with zero experience while you're also out of school. So I will link all of these sections and the corresponding timestamps in the description box below. So make sure you use the time timeline information as a table of content to find the most helpful information that's applicable to you. And from the title, you probably already know that I will also be hosting a huge giveaway in this video. I will pick two winners and the winners will each get 60 minutes private career coaching session with me. Each of the winners will also get two of my favorite UX research books that helped me throughout my research journey. Make sure you watch the video till the very end and check out the description box for detailed rules about how to enter my entry. So first of all, let's talk about what is a UX researcher and how is it different than a researcher from a different field. So in simple words, I think a UX researcher is a person who performs research using different methods to understand how people use a technology or a physical product, their attitudes towards it, and also their deeper needs. And this will eventually help inform a product decision that addresses these needs. So essentially, a UX researcher's job is to ask the right questions, find the right UX research methods to answer these questions and bring these answers to a broader team of contributors on a single product so that we can build a digital experience or a physical product to make human lives easier. So based on this definition of a UX researcher, here's a list of qualities that I think a UX researcher should have. First, your research knowledge, and this means your rigor and craft, your ability to solve a research question. Second, your knowledge about design and user experience. So you understand in what context you're doing research in and what you can actually influence. Third, product thinking knowledge. You need to understand the product development life cycle so that you can understand when would what problems be most pertinent that a UX researcher can jump in and solve. Fourth, communication and collaboration skills. This will help you to establish a collaborative research process and know how to work with others. Last but not least, impact and leadership. This quality would allow UX researcher to understand how to influence others' decisions with data and drive a product strategy. Take notes. Are you taking notes? If you haven't, start taking notes. So now I will provide you with a quick study guide, which is a list of six questions that you should start Googling now and find answers to. First, design thinking and what's the process of user experience design. 
Second, what are different stages of product development life cycle? Third, for these different stages, what different questions are we usually looking to solve? Fourth, what's the best UX research methods or strategy to answer these problems? Five, how do I practice these UX research methods and strategies? And six, what are some typical generative, iterative, and evaluative UX research methods? Even if you think you already have a pretty good understanding of what UX research is, I still recommend you to go through the answers to these six questions as a preparation before you go to your UX research job interview. All right, so now you know what you need to study. So how can you learn about these and what resources should you use? So I did some research and I categorized all of the learning resources out there in the market into these seven buckets. And I have ordered them from the highest commitment to the lowest commitment. They are first, going back to school full-time and get a higher degree in a related field. Signing up for a UX research certificate program that a university provided. A UX research bootcamp. Signing up for an online class package that you can take at your own pace. Reading books. Reading online free articles or blogs. Watch YouTube videos, such as my YouTube videos. So when I talk about commitment, so what we're talking about is, first of all, time commitment. Second of all, money commitment. Third, pros and cons, as in how each one of these resources will actually help you get a job in UX research. So let's talk about them one by one. First, going back to school and get a higher degree. This will be the most time consuming thing to do for obvious reasons, right? Especially if you're thinking about grad school, either a master or a PhD degree, because you're doing it full time. So it's a huge time and financial commitment. However, going back to school is the safest way for you to enter the field. Going back to school full time, not only give you the knowledge, your instructors can also be your mentors. So you already got mentorship. The most important thing is enrolling in a program full time will also give you opportunities to find internships because a lot of internships now nowadays are only open to students who are enrolled full-time in school. That is a very important thing to think about. The next three resources, signing up for a program at a university or taking a UX research bootcamp class or signing up for online classes. These essentially are the same thing, right? Some of the programs will take a longer time. Some of the programs will take shorter time or you can take it at your own pace. I get a lot of questions from you around whether I should take a UX bootcamp class. My answer is always, if you are one who functions very well in a school institution kind of environment, then go for it. So what I mean by that is some people, they learn faster if they are sitting in a class and follow an instructor's curriculum. I actually am one of those people. I function very well if I am taking a class. However, if your goal is utilizing these boot camps or online classes to eventually get your job, there are still a lot of work that you got to do on your own. So a UX research certificate from an online institution or from a university doesn't directly grant you you the job experience that you need to get you that first full-time job. All the things that the bootcamp or the classes and certificate are going to provide you is the foundational knowledge. You still need to utilize these foundational knowledge and apply it into the real world and gain real experience from there so that you can get your first job. But I still need to stress that. I still think these resources are great because it offers you a very systematic way to gain that knowledge and also it helps you to build connections and start growing your network, which is also super important if you wanted to develop yourself in this field. All right, and now let's talk about books, online free articles, and also YouTube videos. I do believe these kind of resources are best for you to use when you already have that foundational layer of knowledge and you wanted to learn something more in depth. So you can search for these resources to gain that specific knowledge. So if you come to watch my videos, you will see that my videos are usually about a very specific UX research topic that I got a lot of questions on. If that happens to be a topic that you are confused about and you are interested in learning more, then watching my video will help you a lot. However, if you have zero knowledge of even what UX research is, you probably will have a hard time to even understand the jargons and the context I'm offering, which will make you even more confused and more overwhelmed. I'm not trying to push you away. Please subscribe to my channel. But I do believe that if you are really starting off from scratch, best way to gain this foundational knowledge is find a way to learn them systematically. All right, phew, that is actually the hardest topic to talk about in this video. So I was actually very stressed out about it. So hopefully I have explained it well. If you have further questions, please leave your questions in the comment section below and I will try my best to answer your questions. 
So next thing I wanted to talk about is after you have found a way to gain these UX research knowledge, are you ready to be a UX researcher now? Not yet, but you are now equipped to do UX research now. To become a real UX researcher in the industry, you need a lot of practices and do a lot of research projects yourself because after all, both UX design and UX research career paths are very practice driven, which means practical knowledge is much more important than theoretical knowledge. But now here is the biggest chicken and egg problem in the UX field. If you don't have a job, how are you gonna gain experience? But if you don't have the experience, how are you gonna gain a job? So today, let me give you a few tips and I have personally used to build up my UX research portfolio for my first job. First is to create your own UX research project to work on. Pick a product you love or hate or you wish to love, but it's somehow not working in your favor and do some research on it. Yeah, just start doing research and do it yourself. The easiest projects that you can pull off on your own are some evaluative research projects that do not require you to have any new designs, such as a first time user experience evaluation. You can simply recruit your classmates, your friends, your relatives who you think could be the target audience of this particular product that you picked and just simply ask them to go through the flow of downloading the app for the first time, signing up for an account, going through the first onboarding flow, placing their first order or some sort, right? Or you can do a heuristics evaluation. In this case, you don't even need UX research participants. Or you can do a competitive analysis to look at the competitor landscape of the product that you picked. See, these are all projects that you can pull off and you can do today on your own without anybody else's help. And whenever I recommend this tip for my mentees, one of the most frequently asked questions following up on this is, okay, so will these projects count? Will the interviewers accept these projects? Of course they will. Why would they not count? So think about if you went back to school or you sign up for a UX bootcamp. Essentially what you're going through is exactly the same process. You take a lecture to learn about the knowledge and the professor will ask you to pick a product that you're interested in and identify a user problem that you want to do research on and start doing research. If you can do it in a class or a bootcamp, you can do it on your own as well. But the only thing that's missing is you need to ensure the project is done with high quality and rigor. And this is something that a grad school or a UX bootcamp can provide you because at school, you know, you have teachers, instructors to look over your projects and evaluate that. But when you do it on your own, it's really hard to ensure that. Which leads me to my second recommendation. Find your friends or classmates who are in the same process of transitioning into UX UX to be a thought partner and be each other's critic. Or even better, find your partner to collaborate on the same project. You could be the researcher and your friend could be the designer that realize all of your findings, or you could both be researchers and make the scope of your project bigger. So before, when you're doing it on your own, you can only interview five participants within the same user group. Now with a partner, you can interview additional five participants in a different user group. So in this case, you not only get a valid UX research project under your belt, you can can also gain very precious experience of communicating and collaborating with others. Last but not least, my third recommendation for you to gain UX research experience without a job is to do pro bono UX research job for local communities. To be very honest with you, I initially felt a little bit iffy about this because I'm always a big believer as in you should get paid for your hard work and no one should take advantage of you for your free work. However, later on, I have actually realized realized that these are the actual organizations that are desperately in need of some UX researcher or designer's blessings. But they're also the ones that usually lack UX knowledge the most. Also, they are the ones that are not sure what kind of value can a designer or a researcher bring to their organization. So if you can offer your help pro bono and make them realize how this can impact their business in a positive way, I think it's a good thing to do, right? And you're also doing the whole community a favor because the more businesses that realize how important UX research is, the more UX research job opportunities eventually will be. Am I right? All right, if you have watched this video till this far, then congratulations! You are fully equipped to embark on this journey. I know this video is full of 
information. So make sure you save this video for your watch later playlist so you can keep coming back to this. Last but not least, if you find this video helpful and wanted to enter my giveaway of 60 minutes private one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, plus also these two super helpful books, and here are the ways you can enter my giveaway. First, subscribe to my channel and like this video. Leave a comment below in this video and share with me one UX research topic that you would be interested to learn in the future. Last but not least, follow me on my Instagram, Aona Talks. I'm not sure when this video will be posted, so make sure you check out the information in the description box down below on when I will be announcing the winner. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope this video is helpful for all of you career starters out there. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you in more of my future videos. Bye!